Uh, our next presenter yeah. is Oliver Feltham, and he teaches in the Department of History at uh, American University of Paris, and uh, he teaches in areas such as critical theory, contemporary French philosophy, Lacanian psychoanalysis, uh, early modern philosophy, political philosophy. He has a number of books that are, I think, well known to many of us here. Uh, Anatomy of Failure, Philosophy and Political Action, Bloomsbury, two 2013, Alain Badiou Live Theory from 2008. Uh, he's also contributed to a number of edited projects around uh, Logique des Mondes and on Alain Badiou. Uh, and perhaps uh, we're, we're all in an infinite debt for his uh, wonderful translation of Being and Event uh, that uh, was itself an important Anglophone event. I think. Uh, and so, very happy to present Oliver here today. And uh, the title of his talk is Writing Multiplicity, One or Several Ontologies. So, thanks very much, Nick. Um, and I'd also like to thank uh, Jana and Michael for the invitation to um, come to Prague, which is most appreciated. Um, so to leap straight in, the paper has four sections, uh, as you can see laid out just there. And I'm going to start off with a question around the status of the argument that mathematics is ontology. In the first meditation of being an event, Badiou sets out its inaugural thesis. Mathematics is ontology, the science of being qua being. In meditation one, he sets out the requirements for ontology. And then, in meditation three, he proceeds to identify a particular kind of mathematics that satisfies those requirements. But that is too simple. There seems to be a puzzle here. What comes first? The argument that determines the requirements for ontology or the identification of set theory as ontology. One cannot argue that a particular discourse is uniquely suitable for the task of ontology without pronouncing as to the nature of being and thus engaging, at least in a preliminary manner, in ontology yourself. Is there not a problem of circularity here? On the one hand, we find these very strong readings of canonical texts in the history of metaphysics that are supposed to set up the choice of set theory as ontology. And yet at the same time, the strong theses and leaps in these readings seem to be either anchored or driven by the prior choice of set theory as ontology. So there are two solutions to this general puzzle. They break the circularity by positing a basic order. One can argue that it is the philosophical arguments that come first. Namely, there's a kind of history of being to rival that of Heidegger, and the election of set theory comes second. Let's call this the argument from philosophy or from the priority of philosophy. Or, one can argue that what comes first is the naming of a Cantorian set theory as a truth procedure within the field of science, which subsequently conditions philosophy and generates this subdiscipline of meta-ontology. Let's call this the argument from the priority of the condition. The challenge for these two solutions to circularity, the criteria for us choosing one over the other will be whether it succeeds in chasing down and eliminating the occasional appearance of arbitrariness in the argument that explains why mathematics is ontology. Let's look first at the argument from philosophy. The initial philosophical argument in being an event results in the following requirement. Being must be thought as inconsistent multiplicity. 
This claim is set up in three steps. First, there is an existential thesis, the one is not. And this starting point is explored in a reading of Plato, specifically the last four hypotheses of the dialogue, the Parmenides. The second step is the construction of the concept of inconsistent multiplicity. When Parmenides explores the hypothesis, if the one is not, nothing is, it leads him to the concept of the plethora, that is, of a multiple that disseminates itself internally without limit. This is what Badiou calls the inconsistent multiplicity. Nevertheless, Badiou argues there is some oneness, an effect of unity. Thus, there must be an operation of unification that distributes inconsistent multiplicity before and consistent multiplicity after its operation. Finally, there is the, another existential thesis, which is that the nothing is. Within consistent multiplicity, inconsistent multiplicity is nothing. And as such, it subsists in structured presentations as the void, the void thus marking both the operation of the count for one and the material, the inconsistent multiplicity from which all structure is composed. And finally, Ad, uh, Badiou adds another requirement for ontology, which is that ontology must be compatible with contemporary praxis of the subject. So in other words, the strategy of this argument is to claim that it's the confrontation with the impasses of the history of ontology that entails these theses on the nature of being. Theses which in turn set up the requirement for ontology. After an examination of various kinds of discourse, it turns out that the only discourse capable of exploring and unfolding the implications of these theses is a particular kind of set theory. We find this argument from the priority of philosophy in meditations one, two, and six of being an event, which develop readings of Heidegger, Plato, and Aristotle. And we also find it massively in the seminar from 1983 to 1986. Now there are two versions of this argument from philosophy, which we shall call the via negativa and the historial. On the one hand, Badiou will engage in a negative demonstration, which I call the via negativa, arguing that ontologies committed to the being of the one end in ruins. For instance, in the short treatise of transitory ontology, Badiou rapidly pulls apart Aristotle's necessary supposition of a global unity, the prime mover, in order to resolve difficulties in the theory of substance as an impossible union of matter and form. In being an event, he claims that ontology repeatedly falls into an abyss or a labyrinth when it tries to resolve the relationship between the discrete and the continuum, and also when it tries to resolve the relationship between the one and the multiple. This negative demonstration is a little like Kant's proof of the systematicity of transcendental philosophy through its resolution of the antinomies of pure reason, antinomies that ruin all other philosophies. The simplest form for this demonstration would be an argument from the absurd, where an initial premise ineluctably leads to a contradiction, and hence one is obliged to jettison the initial premise, namely the being of the one. The problem, of course, is that despite the variety and breadth of Badiou's examples of paradox and contradiction in the history of ontology, strictly speaking, this demonstration can never be exhaustive because the history of philosophy is still open. Someone, perhaps they are here today, might well come along and write a coherent ontology on the basis of the premise that being is one. 
it is quite difficult to demonstrate impossibility outside the confines of a simple formal system in which one's options for argument are exha exhaustible. Hence Badiou's frequent recourse to another version of the argument from philosophy, the historial. He claims, for instance, that the being of the one is the fundamental commitment of all um, ontotheology. However, the orientation of thinking that Badiou is carving out holds itself contemporary to, or tributary of, Nietzsche's declaration that God is dead. A declaration that mortifies all gods, those of metaphysics, religion, and poetry alike. I have my own personal version of Nietzsche's declaration that God is dead. I went into a church once uh, with my daughter, and I said to her, shh. And my daughter, who is French, said, c'est qui qui dort? Who's sleeping? And I said, God. Dieu. And she said, connais pas. Don't know him. That's a nice, you know, child's version. So there is no going back on Nietzsche's epochal declaration. Hence, the entire project of ontotheology is closed, and ontology must begin on another basis than the being of the one. Again, in the seminar and in other texts, one finds such historical claims. The thesis, every situation is infinite, is pinned to a reading of Pascal, but it is also situated as a defining thesis of modernity, a thesis that opens up modernity. Badiou often adopts this historical version of the argument from philosophy when he is interpreting and critiquing Heidegger's history of being. It is as though he is setting up, by means of his own interpretations of canonical philosophical texts, a rival history of being. Now here you can see that the historical strategy runs into another problem, one of circularity. If being has its own history, which produces these theses such as the one is not, or every situation is infinite, if that is the case, what is the original language or discourse in which that history of being is disclosed? Remember, we have not yet got to set theory. We are still identifying the preliminary theses that then justify the election of set theory as ontology. So both the via negativa and the historical versions of the argument from philosophy run into problems. I contend that it is these problems that generate the occasional appearance of forcing in Badiou's interpretations of philosophical texts. The occasional appearance of not so much arbitrariness as a prevalence of choice or of decision in the construction of his interpretations. This is not a matter, I should insist, of not convincing specialists Heidegger specialists, Plato specialists, Pascal specialists, of the cogency of Badiou's interpretation. It's rather a matter of the overly apparent strategic or tactical choices in his readings. Now, Badiou, of course, is well aware of the problem of circularity in the justification of an inaugural decision as to the nature of ontology and philosophy. It forms one of the central topics of his analysis of the poem of Parmenides in the eponymous seminar of 1985 to 86. In that seminar, he appears to borrow an idea from Guy Ladreau concerning the foundation of philosophy. Ladreau seems to argue that the inaugural decision as to the nature of philosophy is actually taken from the standpoint of another discourse. Badiou takes his key from this and argues that philosophy is under a supplementary condition. Badiou insists on the heterogeneity of this condition to philosophy and on its encounter with philosophy as productive of, productive of decisions. Let's retain these two terms, heterogeneity and encounter, because they will guide our conclusion. 
Thus, in his seminar, Badiou adopts the argument from the priority of the condition as the solution to the problem of circularity, affecting inaugural decisions, such as the thesis, mathematics is ontology. So let's, let's now look at this solution that Badiou appears to prefer, which is the argument from the priority of the condition. In this case, ZFC set theory. Now this argument runs as follows. Philosophy only occurs historically in the form of a compossibilization of truth procedures occurring in four different conditions of art, science, politics, and love. A philosophy develops a system of reference by constructing its own names for the generic praxis that trace out the consequences of events occurring in these extra philosophical fields. For instance, being an event is an attempt to philosophically name what occurs in the condition of science as a truth procedure faithful to the Cantor event. But it also names what occurs in poetry in Malame's fidelity to the crisis in verse. There are very brief references to Engels and to Mao in the political thinking of the state. And there is an engagement with psychoanalysis as an intervention in the condition of love via the exegesis of Lacan's concept of the subject. As such, it is the philosopher's initial fidelity to the Cantor event that decides that Zermelo Frankel's set theory with the axiom of choice will determine the nature of ontology and hence ground the philosophical theses such as there is no being of the one. First comes the condition and then comes philosophy. Alberto Toscano and Ray Brazier explored this strategy in an article published in 2004, but I think originally written in 99 or 2000, where they claimed that mathematics is ontology, that statement was Badiou's own intervention, his own fidelity to the Cantor event. Now at this point, another suspicion of arbitrariness emerges with regard to the justification of this thesis, mathematics is ontology. Many commentators have asked, why choose this particular variant of set theory? Although Badiou does give a whole number of cogent reasons during the construction of being an event for the choice of ZFC. Others have asked, why choose set theory as a metonymy for mathematics and not another subdiscipline of maths, given that the entirety of mathematics is said to be ontology? Now, I will address this second appearance of arbitrariness or of excessive decision in the argument from the condition in section four of this presentation. For the moment, what I would like to note is the virtue of this argument from conditions. It leads to an exploration of the singularity of ZFC set theory from a philosophical point of view. A series of peculiar characteristics that supposedly justify its election as ontology. The first of which, which has already been mentioned um, by Su Chien, is that set theory has no defined object. There is no explicit unifying definition of a set in ZFC set theory. Rather, there is one primitive relation of belonging which may be used in the ways specified by the axioms. Diverse sets then emerge from that manipulation. The most striking demonstration of this idea occurs in the explanation of the axiom of the union set, which allows one to decompose a given set into further sets um, beneath it, so, so as to speak. The axioms structure and render consistent the situation that is ZFC set theory. This is an exemplary case for pragmatism. Use defines being. That is to say, what counts as being, as multiples of multiples, is only ever whatever is encountered in the facility and obstacles of writing and manipulating sets. There is no unifying 
or totalizing speculative gaze at being. It is neither seen nor grasped, but encountered bit by bit in the scriptural construction of different kinds of sets, in a kind of constrained unfolding of multiples of multiples. Hence being qua being is not an external object, but insists in a writing. Set theory is said to encounter the real in its symptoms. That is to say, historically, it has discovered a number of paradoxes and problems that stymied its efforts at formalization. It is Cantor, for instance, as Su Shen reminded us, it is Cantor and not Badiou who originally develops the concept of an inconsistent multiplicity, precisely in reaction to the discovery of sets that could not be totalized without contradiction. Now, amongst these paradoxes and problems, Badiou briefly mentions the controversy around the axiom of choice. He devotes several pages to Russell's paradox, but the entire last third of the book is devoted to the problem of the continuum and its implications. In the introduction, he announces, Uh, what seemed to me to constitute the essence of the famous problem of the continuum was that in it one touched upon an obstacle intrinsic to mathematical thought in which the very impossibility which founds its domain is said. Indeed, in Meditation 27, he declares that the measure of the excess of the cardinality of an infinite set's power set over the cardinality of that infinite set constitutes the impasse of being. The third feature from Badiou's point of view is that set theory has historically decided upon these symptoms. That is to say, resolutions have been found by mathematicians which open up new and further domains of formalization. Resolutions such as Zomelo's axiom of separation, which avoids Russell's paradox as shown in Meditation 3. Badiou interprets these resolutions as decisions on being. He claims that they evidence, along with Parmenides, that, I quote, the same is both thinking and being. And that's in the short treatise. Now, at this point of our argument, there are two meta-ontological consequences of these decisions on being carried out by set theory. The first concerns the ontological writing of generic truth procedures, and the second, an alternative history of being. So, first consequence. When it comes to the continuum problem, or in Badiou's terms, the impasse of being, he claims that there are four types of decision on that impasse which constitute the four grand orientations of thought, the transcendental, the grammarian constructivist, the indiscernible generic, and the practical. It's rather fun when you come across this list of orientations in thought, because you can play the game of working out where you fit. Who am I? Um, and then you can also place your, your favorite philosophers as well. And I had a long time trying to work out, I knew where I could put the lures, but I couldn't quite work out where Derrida fit for a long time. Badiou then goes on to claim that Cohen's indiscernible generic solution to the impasse of being provides an ontological schema for all generic truth procedures. And thus, all generic truth procedures involve decisions on being. So at this point, the argument from the priority of the condition leads to a multiplication of decisions on being within all those generic truth procedures to which a philosophy attempts to be contemporary. Interestingly, this does not present a reduction of the suspicion of arbitrariness that attended the election of ZFC set theory in particular as ontology. Rather, it presents an exacerbation of that arbitrariness through its transformation into the radical contingency of events and truth procedures. Now for the second consequence of these decisions on being. 
Set theory's decisions intervene in the philosophical problems of ontology. Throughout being an event, Badiou remarks that there are a series of unresolved problems in the history of ontology concerning the one and the multiple, the part and the whole, finite and the infinite, and the discrete and the continuum. It just so happens that Zermelo Fra Frankel set theory provides a series of new solutions to these problems. There is thus a history of being that is generated by Badiou's argument from the condition of set theory to philosophy. Well, precisely, he actually claims explicitly the history of mathematics is the history of being. It is by means of this alternative mathematical history of being that Badiou will be able to rival Heidegger, which seems to be one of his chief concerns in the late 1980s, and ground his claims with regard to the requirements for contemporary thinking. The argument from conditions, from the priority of conditions, thus joins the argument from the priority of philosophy in its commitment to a history of being. But this time the history is grounded in an alternative discourse to philosophy. Thus, in this regard at least, the argument from conditions is superior to the argument from philosophy. At this point, let's return to this suspicion of arbitrariness over why it is that ZFC set theory alone is elected as a metonymy for mathematics and as ontology. It is clear that we cannot hope for any absolutely solid philosophical demonstration of the necessity of ZFC alone as ontology to the exclusion of all other mathematical and non-mathematical candidates for the discourse on being qua being. Such a demonstration is impossible because the equation mathematics is ontology does not take place within a formal system. Here I would like to cite Sam Gillespie. Given that being qua being is given to us exclusively through ontology, it follows that it is very difficult to summon a mathematical ontology to a tribunal of ontology which would tell us whether or not it is a legitimate ontology. I think that's an absolutely brilliant um, insight on the part of Sam. He basically summed up my entire paper in about five lines there. It's also equally evident that Badiou's meta-ontology is not the only possible philosophical exegesis of what is going on inside ZFC. So what is our conclusion concerning the argument from the priority of set theory as a condition for philosophy? It grounds Badiou's alternative history of being, which is good. It does not eliminate the appearance of arbitrariness in the initial election of ZFC set theory, which is bad. And as an ontology compatible with truth procedures, it multiplies decisions on being, which is neither immediately good nor bad, but interesting. So let's try one more approach, the pragmatist approach. This is to ask, <laughs> what does set theory ontology do? What difference does the election of set theory's ontology make to Badiou's philosophical project? Now in Badiou's terminology, this is this question of meta-ontology. And here I come to the final concluding part of my paper. Now the simple answer to the question, what does set theory ontology do, is that it sets out the concepts of a philosophical theory of radical transformation. It allows one to make statements such as, I quote, the form multiple of being is generally infinite. That's from page 266 of Being an Event. Set theory ontology makes the distinction between presentation and representation, between a situation and its state. It generates the concept of evental sites. It generates the ensuing distinction between natural and historical situations. It anchors the claims that there is no totality of nature, there is no totality, no totality of history, etc. It is evident that the choice of ZFC set theory as ontology 
is conceptually extremely rich and productive. And I must insist, when you first read uh, being an event, you have the feeling of being an engaged in an, an incredible adventure because you encounter structures of thought that, unless you're a mathematician, you simply hadn't encountered before. But, and there's always a but, this philosophical theory of radical transformation immediately encounters another problem, which is the problem of schematism. Badiou opens Meditation 12 on natural multiples with the following claim. Set theory, considered as an adequate thinking of the pure multiple or of the presentation of presentation, formalizes any situation whatsoever insofar as it reflects the latter's being as such. That is, the multiple of multiples that makes up any presentation. If, within this framework, one wants to formalize a particular situation, then it is best to consider a set such that its characteristics are comparable to that of the structured presentation, the situation in question. So particular situations are formalized by considering a set as the schema of a situation, hence my term schematism. This passage in particular has caused much consternation amongst commentators. Su Chen To, to my left, asked Badiou a question about this very passage in the interview found in the English translation of the concept of model. Now, schematism is not just present in this passage, but also in many of the meta-ontological statements in the early meditations, especially the claim that set theory is the presentation of presentation. That is to say, the presentation of the inconsistent multiplicity of all consistent multiplicities in non-ontological situations. Now, the first problem with meta-ontology as a schematism, and it's one that Ray Brazier pointed out very early on, is that it, turns, it appears to turn set theory into a referential discourse. It gives it supposed objects, those objects being the implicit structures of non-ontological situations. And so Badiou would be a kind of structuralist, but après la lettre. Well, it's a shitty joke, sorry. One loses, but one loses the radically imminent and scriptural quality of set theory ontology that I referred to before. The second problem with schematism, the one that bothers most of the Anglo-Saxon commentators with their heritage of empiricism, is how to actually demonstrate that a particular set schematizes a particular situation. Of course, one cannot demonstrate that sets provide the schemas of all non-ontological situations without already having made some prior decisions as to the adequation of other discourses to these supposedly given situations and also having a translation protocol between those discourses and set theory and finally accepting what is lost in those translations. Indeed, this entire objection seems to be caught up in the impossibility of reinventing Carnap's project in the Aufbau. I am, unfortunately, English. I have that empiricist heritage, so I cannot simply ignore or dismiss this problem. What I did is find a solution in another part of Badiou's oeuvre, his first book on mathematics as a condition of philosophy, that is, the concept of model. So my hypothesis is that meta-ontology is not a schematizing of non-ontological situations. Rather, it's the result of the modeling of philosophical ontology by the syntax of ZFC set theory. I developed this argument elsewhere. Today, I will summarize its conclusion. The operation of conditioning philosophy involves the selection of a theoretical syntax 
from the language and names of a generic truth procedure, in this case, ZFC set theory. The second step is to select a semantic field, in this case, philosophy, in particular, the history of ontology. A model of the theory is said to be produced if its syntax and the operations that its syntax permits can be reproduced without contradiction within that semantic field. Hence, in terms of the production of meta-ontology, if Badiou can reproduce the syntax and operations of ZFC set theory in the semantics of the history of ontology without encountering contradiction, then he will have produced a model, a philosophical model of ZFC set theory. The argument from the priority of conditions must therefore be understood via the operation of modeling. This hypothesis neatly resolves the problem of schematism. Badiou's meta-ontology does not provide a theoretical schema of non-ontological situations. Rather, these objects or names, such as non-ontological situation, natural or historical situation, eventful site, state, impasse of being, these are all elements of a model of a theory. In pragmatic terms, Badiou's meta-ontology creates a new universe of objects. Thus, when I analyze a situation as a historical situation, for example, my meta-ontological model simply enters into competition, not with given concrete situations, as if according to some vulgar empiricism, but with established universes created by the models of other theories. That is to say, it enters into an ideological battle, which is the constant and strictly speaking, theatrical background of Badiou's entire project. There is always a fundamental ideological battle underneath the, the, the philosophical work. So schematism is dismissed, but there is one last problem that this solution from modeling encounters. It does not completely eliminate the suspicion of arbitrariness. Simply put, why model ZFC set theory and not another mathematical theory. Here the solution is evident, and it is exemplified by Badiou's own practice, turning to category theory in the logics of worlds to entirely remodel the philosophical discipline of phenomenology, and then turning apparently back to the theory of grand cardinals to rework his system again in the forthcoming imminence of truths. In other words, there is a positive interpretation of the initial choice of ZFC appearing arbitrary and undemonstrated. The practice of modeling can entail a plurality of models. In this way, arbitrariness is transformed into the contingency of a decision. Here we can follow as our guide the many decisions on being that take place in the multitude of generic truth procedures. That is to say, we can accept a proliferation of decisions on being. It doesn't need to make us anxious. And here I would just say, uh, I think that there are two, especially if one's Anglo-Saxon and one has this ideological empiricist heritage, there are two key features of Alain Badiou's style of thinking, um, which, which are disturbing if you have this heritage. The first is that beyond or dismissing all prudence, there is an ontological extravagance in, in Badiou's work. So there is no equivalent to Occam's razor, there is no parsimony. And the second feature is that beyond liberalism's nice, you know, liberalism always emphasizes freedom of choice, but it very much restricts the kinds of choices that you can make and it also always gives you decision criteria. Whereas the, the, the style of Badiou's thinking involves decisions that can't be based on calculations. Okay. If these decisions on being that we're going to multiply now through more modeling, if they concern the modeling of ontology itself, then we find the way open to, to not just one, but many ontologies. Now this would be quite a different strategy to adopt on the basis of the initial argument that the being of the one must be rejected 
and being must be thought as inconsistent multiplicity. Perhaps this would be an approach similar to what Jean-Louis Desanti calls extrinsic ontology, according to which when one interprets the, the phrase being qua being, one works to embrace the maximum, sense, the maximum of senses encapsulated in being, along the lines of Aristotle's original intuition. There are actually a few openings to this strategy of many ontologies rather than one in Badiou's own work. When he shows how set theory ontology does not totalize being, apart from inscribing a lack or an incompletion, does this not open up the possibility of other kinds of inscription of being? When he argues that ontology is not a transcendental, all-englobing situation, but merely one situation amongst others, could it not also be one ontology amidst others? There are two evident objections to this strategy of multiple ontologies. First, it will end in eclecticism. See the conferences on the ontology of this or that, the ontology of emotions, the ontology of social constructs. Second, doesn't the choice of multiple ontologies via this eclecticism finally end up in nihilism? See Barry Smith doing formal ontology for the FBI. <laughs> One can avoid eclecticism and nihilism by dismissing the very idea that every situation comports its own set of existential commitments, which constitute a specific ontology. One does not need to take the Aristotelian route. In my own work on the being of action, I show that ontology opens up as an inquiry and not just as a set of assumptions when a failure or dysfunction occurs in the reception and consequences of an action. The action itself turns out to be equivocal in that it is subject to conflicting attributions of not only its nature, for example, is it a just action or an unjust action? Has Macron ensured a return of the rule of law in Notre Dame des Landes? Or has he destroyed people's livelihoods? So you don't just have um, conflicting attributions of the nature of an action, but you also have, and this is far more serious, conflicting attributions of the agents of an action and of its intention. Okay? And because there's no other ground of personhood in this system than the attributions of agency, you basically dissolve personhood. So ontologies multiply only insofar as people explore the nature of failure in the occurrence of actions. I call this approach an anatomy of failure. The result of people carrying out anatomies of failure and broadcasting them is that alongside this stellar set theory ontology, which writes the inconsistent multiplicities underneath all kinds of existential commitment, we would also embrace a multiplication of sublunar ontologies and so account for the disjunctions and overlaps in existential commitments, such as the disjunction between Creon and Antigone, between Macron and the Zadist. The level at which these ontologies would make a difference would be in the diagramming of conflicts over what kinds of action exist. The result of such an exercise would not be simply dialogue across conflict. You can read Rorty for that. The result of such an exercise would be the remodeling of these conflicts according to these multiple ontologies. Such remodeling, and this is an argument I develop at length with regard to Hume's History of England, such remodeling creates new durations. And every new duration entails the emergence of a powerful, because new, measure of the gap between the actual and the ideal. And in the gap between the actual and ideal emerges the hope of justice. <laughs>